you all look like the version of the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> that old TV show. Hmm. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So delighted that you are here. Now, I don't know about you, but this is kind of how my week went. Oh, those cats. They puked all over the carpet again. You know, that, that pain in my leg, that blood clot thing, it, it, it's not going away. Am I going to be able to fly? Oh, don't even get me started. When is Trump just going to give it up? And of course, the really scary one. Daddy, I'm 16 now. I've done everything you've asked. Can I take the car and go spend the night with my friend? It's only 63 miles away, according to the GPS. So what to do? On the surface, I'm feeling a lot of aggression in the air, in myself and in others. What to do when the shame shows up? And it's like, well, you know what? Our daughter's right. She really does deserve. She's earned the right to drive herself to her friends. Why am I so tensed up about that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because she's going to be driving on the interstate all by herself. Has she really been truly properly prepared? And what can I trust in this medical system here in America anyway? The Western doctors say this. The Eastern practitioners say that. All I know is the pain's not going away. <sighs> now, what does Zen say about all this? Oh, looks like you're all shook up, Fujin. But you know, if you just sit down and let this represent your meditation, if you just be still, things will clear on their own. You don't even have to try. Just be. But what do I do about all the stress and strain? What about all this pain? And how do I help people with all their disdain, culturally, politically, even within their own families? I happen to have an 87-year-old father who wants to die. It's kind of funny in a weird sort of way. Leave me alone, I'm trying to die. Well, you've gotten your way a lot, Dad, in this life, but you know what? I'm not so sure that that's really your call. You better get your ass out here and help me do something with that Zen. Well, how do you feel, Dad? Well, I'm scared. Okay. But look, it's just been a minute or so. I can actually 
it's still cloudy, but it's beginning to clear. Fujin, you don't understand. I'm a busy corporate executive. I don't really have time to sit here and stare at my navel. And besides, I don't really know how relevant this is anyway, if you really want my honest opinion. Not that you asked. But you know, if you could help me with the disdain, the other side, politically, nationally, culturally, it's the other side. If you can just help them calm the hell down, maybe we can get somewhere. So what does Zen have to say about all of that? Three different times this week, I got the same request. Can you help me drain this disdain I feel for my fellow citizens? Can you help me drain the disdain I feel about my own family? Siblings can't even get along with, who's gonna take a turn to take care of that? Does Zen, can Zen help at all? Because I've been trying to solve all these problems and it's just not working. And you kind of give me that smart aleck uh, Zen quote about, well, we don't, in Zen, we don't really focus on solving problems. It's more like we, we stay present and watch the dilemmas dissolve. Oh, quit being a smart aleck. Like really. I'm in a lot of pain here. I'm feeling a lot of emotion. I've got monkey mind. I am so distracted. I don't know quite what to do. And you're sitting there telling me, Ata Deepa? You start with that and you end with that, Fujin. Is that the only thing you really know how to teach? Really? Well, maybe there's something to it. Oh, let's check in. Wow. To be still and still move. Atta Deepa, you are this light. Well, what does that mean? Well, pure selfless awareness. Well, what does selfless mean? Oh, your practice is my practice, is our practice. It's not just about me. It's not about me just sitting here staring at my navel. All right, go on. You've got my attention now. Rely upon selfless awareness. Well, why would I do that? Because you can count on it. It's changeless. It's timeless. It's even selfless. It's so much more than this bag of bones named Tom Pittner. What a relief. All right, tell me more. Do not depend upon beliefs, sensations, or emotions. Well, why? Because they arise and fall away. You can't count on them. Well, if that was true, why do we have the Republicans so certain that they know what's right? And the Democrats, they think they've got it all right. And we're just split right down the middle. 
How's that going to help? Well, you know, do not depend upon beliefs doesn't mean that you don't have beliefs. It's kind of how the brain organizes and helps you function during the day. It's really important. All Zen is saying is take it easy. Hold your beliefs lightly. This rely upon selfless awareness. Do not rely upon concepts of self and other. Also, it's not just me and it's not just you. It's not two. Well, how can that be? Well, remember Rumi, this breath breathing human being. All Zen does is it encourages and empowers us to put the horse before the cart. Put your being ahead of your humanity. Now, I hadn't thought about that. Being human. It's a verb. That means you're going to change. And that's natural. You can fight it or you can flex and flow with it. Now notice how the Buddha put it. Do not depend upon beliefs. He knew something about how thoughts worked. The way you think is the way you're going to go. If you can sit and bear witness to those thoughts, the most amazing thing happens. Even with the stubborn beliefs, they eventually go away. Now, they can come right back up. But now, your practice really serves this life because you're able to hold on to it just a little lighter. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of, of wonderful things that our thoughts bring to our minds. Maybe they're recurrent ones and they become beliefs. And maybe those beliefs serve us. I'm sure they do. They can also constrict us at different stages in our lives. Beliefs, sensations. Oh, you mean there's something about embodiment that Zen really focuses on? Down and into the body, not up and out and blaming and shaming everyone else. Try that for a while. Well, how would I go about doing that? This breath breathing human being. Deepen and soften the breath. Look within. And the most amazing thing begins to happen. It's getting clearer. I don't have to create anything. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, no one to become. I don't have to prove, I don't have to improve. I love the way Sing San says it. This is one of my essential Zen quotes. Do not seek the truth. Only cease to cherish your opinions. 
only cease to cherish your opinions. You're already here now. Your being does not come and go. The Great Heart Sutra reaffirms this over and over and over again. Took him about 400 years to really put it to the test. And notice, 2,600 years, it's still percolating. So, if we don't depend upon our beliefs, our sensations, and our emotions, then surely, Fujin, you must be smoking something. Because that's real for me. Why do you think I got to go take a hit out on the back porch? I just got to find a way to calm myself down. So don't you preach to me about how it really isn't what you want to rely on. And then what do we say? Back to the breath. Back to the breath. Back to the breath. It'll bring you to a single point of focus. And when you hold the boundary of no, I'm not going to turn away. No. I'm not going to let this pain get the best of me. I'm just going to be here now. How does Fujin put it? Love. Don't just be here. Love being here now. And I'm just going to put this to the test. Because he keeps telling me, whatever you do, don't believe it. Experience it for yourself. Well, all right. I'm going to try experiencing it for myself. and then the bottom drops out. You will have a direct experience. How will you know? You will just know, K-N-O-W. The no to the thoughts, no to the feelings, no to the sensations, no to the fantasies, no to the stories, no to being ego bound, no to my opinions, hell no to your opinions, And it just dissolves into not knowing. What a relief. I don't have to be the know-it-all. Just trust the not knowing. Well, why would I do that? Well, the not knowing knows. And if you bring it full circle to the Atadipa, then meditative awareness, clear intention, acting wisely. Notice they didn't say get smart. They say be wise. Compassion, not all this passion where I shut off all my faculties. No, it's just be here now. And what you'll notice is this radical acceptance. It just happens. And then the skillful means, oh my gosh, maybe I, I, I have the humility if I can just get a little dissolved from my ego. Oh my goodness. Now I'm ready to be on my growing edge. I can develop some skills. I stop pretending. And I just continue to grow and develop. And I notice that it enhances the quality of my life. Whose life? Well, my life. You know, because we include the ego in Zen. It's transcend and include. 
And then it's include and transcend. It's the both and. Okay. How are we doing that guy? Okay. Atadipa. How do you drain the disdain? Deeper. Deepen and soften your breath. Listen deeper. Deeper than what you think about your opponents. Deeper than the sensations in your body. Deeper than those emotions. Let the silence speak and then you will know what to do with wisdom, with compassion, with skillful means. Okay, we've got a few minutes. If anyone has a question, um, just kind of raise your hand and we'll see if we can take a few minutes of questions and then we'll go back to putting all this to the test. Oh, wow, it's a miracle. Look, we're speechless. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a little assignment. With any luck, especially politically, I want you to listen deeper, whether you know what political persuasion someone is or not, it doesn't really matter. I come from the heart of Kansas, it's a very conservative state. But one thing I can tell you, even when I live north of Berkeley, one of the most progressive cities in the country, in the world for that matter. But you know what I've noticed? I can always listen deeper and respond rather than just react. And you know what I've noticed since the election that just totally delights me? It doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, independent. They all love their pets and they take really good care of them. Well, hey, there's some common ground. Let's celebrate that. And Dark chocolate really helps too. Especially when you're contemplating that you may or may not get to have uh, holidays with your family. Remember, even in a COVID crisis, look for the opportunity. When you listen deep enough, it will come to you naturally. The wisdom is to be able to listen and respond in the present moment. That's the practice. But when we don't practice, we often miss it because we're thinking about the past or we're worrying about the future. All healing takes place in the present moment. All opportunity reveals itself in the present moment. Let's stay in the present moment. It will dissolve all that disdain. And with that, I'm forever in. Kenyon.